deep in the heart of Texas sprawls the city of San Antonio, famous as the site of the Alamo. But here this afternoon, a basketball war will unfold, featuring Magic Johnson of the Los Angeles Lakers. Magic's big man is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. San Antonio will attempt a rally behind George Gervin, known as the Iceman. This is a must win for the Spurs. They trail the Lakers two victories to one in the Western Conference Final. The Hemisphere Arena in San Antonio, Texas, where the Los Angeles Lakers now are being introduced. This, of course, is game four of the Western Conference Final. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. A pleasure to be with you. We will quickly check the bracket board. You can see now that the Lakers, by breaking through, have a 2-1 edge on San Antonio. The series, of course, moves back to Los Angeles next Wednesday night. Over in the east, and they are starting at the same hour as we are, Milwaukee and Philadelphia, the 76ers can close the Bucks out. They would move to the final for the third time in the last four years. And throughout the afternoon, we will keep you up to date on that score. The crowd in the background coming to its feet as the San Antonio Spurs are about to be introduced. This is what is known as the home court advantage. It's a pleasure for me to again be working alongside Kevin Lockery. And Kevin, we cannot overstate the importance of this game to the Spurs. Brent, this is almost like a seventh game for San Antonio. They can't afford not they can't afford to go down 3-1 and lose today at home because they're not good enough to beat LA twice in LA. Now we have spoken a lot about the bench. The Lakers were without James Worthy. Bob McAdoo has given them a strong 22 points a game, but the Lakers still have a man who might have turned the series around. They have a real true six man in Michael Cooper. He's a great athlete. He's averaging 30 minutes a game. Here he receives the alley-oop pass, which has become famous from, from Nixon. Got the sensational athletic moves he has, but the most strong, biggest point is his defense. Right here, he will steal a ball, which he does so often, and his great speed enables him to take it to full length of the floor to beat all the skill more to the basket. He's a big key to the Los Angeles Lakers. Kevin, a short time ago, you spoke to both coaches. Any changes, any injuries? Pat Riley will probably trap and be very aggressive defensively. San Antonio and Stan back. We'll get the ball to Iceman. He only took 12 shots last game. He'll take over 20 today. Edgar Jones might not play. If he doesn't play, that will hurt San Antonio. We are just about ready now to start game four here in San Antonio. It's the Spurs and the Lakers coming up. The NBA on CBS. Today's playoff game is sponsored by Miller Highlight. Welcome to Miller Time. Gillette after a razor. The twin blade razor that pivots for a close, comfortable shave. And by Armor Oil. It beautifies and protects rubber, vinyl, leather, and plastic. How can a guy 5'9 have an unfair advantage over these guys? I use the Gillette Atra razor. They don't. It's got the advantage of a pivoting head. Atra is better than twin blade razors that don't pivot. See? They don't always stay in my beard. But my Atra pivots to keep both blades on my beard longer. So I get a better shave. Close. Comfortable. Get the Gillette Atra and get the Atra advantage. Sometimes a little advantage goes a long way. <laughs> 
I'm a chauffeur. It's up to me to take care of the cars I drive. Armor all protectant, my secret. I use it on the tires, the vinyl top, and inside on the dashboard and the seats. It helps keep things like new, even on this old classic. I do hope the master never sells her. They just don't make cars like they used to. Armor all. It's science, but it works like magic. Here now are the matchups from Stan Albeck's point of view, how they will align. Kurt Rambis goes against Mike Mitchell. Of course, Pat Riley has gone to his bench often in that spot. George Gervin will take Jamal Wilkes, and Wilkes will attempt to keep him working on defense. The center matchup is a dream. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar against Artis Gilmore. And of course, Norm Nixon against Johnny Moore. Moore was injured Friday night, but he's okay here this afternoon. And Gene Banks, who today is celebrating his 24th birthday, will take the magic man, Irvin Johnson. Our officials for today's game, Earl Strom and Ed Rush will work the contest. Paul Mahalik is the alternate. Let me give you a little rundown on them. Around the league, Ed Rush generally calls a lot of contact fouls. You have a lot of free throws when he officiates. As far as Strom is concerned, well, a coach like Pat Riley dearly loves to see him working a game because he is not intimidated by a home crowd. Now, that's the word on the officials going into this game. We'll see how it unfolds. Pat, Pat Riley has decided that he's going to come out trapping to make them very aggressive defensively. I look for George Gervin to get directly involved in the offense for San Antonio. Double-O Johnny Moore moves to 34, Mike Mitchell, and it gets back to Moore. George Gervin is 44. Got it off to Gene Banks. Banks moves it to Moore. Lakers, first possession. Magic with control, directing the attack. Kareem is out high. Wilkes 52 comes down the lane, picked up by Banks. Four seconds on the shot clock. Knocked away from Rambis. Two on the shot clock. And Ed Rush has the ball. Eddie Rush called the foul on, on Johnny Moore. On the loose ball foul. It was an aggressive defensive play. They were scrambling for the ball. And the foul was called on Moore. Stan Albeck knowing the importance. This game for the Spurs. Jamal. Man goes into artists. Magic knocked it away. Moore cleaned up. The battle underneath. Rambus clears. Nixon's in the middle. That's a perfect fast break by Los Angeles. He stopped at the foul line. Magic and Wilkes filled the lanes. Nixon took the jump shot. That's as good as a layup. Moore sliding in, missing. And it's in the possession of Magic Johnson again. Leading Wilkes beautifully. What a nice touch on that pass. A very tough pass to make. You're moving at full speed almost. You've got a man just ahead of you over the defender. What a feathery touch. And Milwaukee, of course, must win there. They've already lost the first three of that Eastern Conference final. Mitchell. it back to Jamal, the old give and go coming down the baseline. They uh, have such great teamwork, and they've played so long together, they know one another's moves. The last two baskets show that great catches, both of them, by Wilkes. Gilmore. Foul is on Banks. And that's his second. That's a big foul because Banks with two fouls, and if Edgar Jones is not able to play, Stan Orbach will have to use some people that have not played very much in this series, and that could be a big play. Jamal. 
And the Lakers hit their first five shots from the field. It's against Wilkes. There's the play here. You're not allowed to use your hands on defense. They called the foul on Wilkes. As we said, Eddie Rush will call him early. Gervin misses. Loose, Artis, but it's going over the other way. Fouls on Mike Mitchell climbing the back. He's very aggressive, Mitchell, on, on the offensive boards. He will pick up a few, but that's, that's really a good foul. Something to watch for when the Spurs come down on the attack. Johnny Moore is shooting more than George Gervin. That's not what you want. Kareem had Artis on him. That's and the kind foul. of foul you don't want to pick up. They called on Artis Gilmore for using his hands, just as Wilkes did. As you said, Brent, it looks like the officials are going to call an awful lot of fouls, particularly early. Much different than game than the game the other night. Stolen by Moore. Artis comes back quickly to help out on the break. Mitchell's in the middle. And Magic Johnson. Mitchell rebounds. Outlets over Gervin's head. Thrown a little too high. Magic hits Nixon. Inside, knocked away by Banks. Kareem. out of bounds. Eddie Rush did not have a good look at that. It went off Kareem after it was hit, but because he was behind him, he turns it over to the Lakers. Kareem. Out of the first seven baskets that the Lakers have gotten, they've gotten six assists. Stan Orbach will call a timeout because they're scoring too easily and doing whatever they want offensively. Yes, Stan has called a timeout. L.A. is moving the ball to his lead. They're getting into the offense without any defensive pressure. They've scored seven baskets and have six assists. Good timeout by Stan. That kid's out there again. But he's not alone. He's got a dream with him. And every night after work, he chases that dream. The one that says, someday, you're going to watch him run 400 meters faster than any other man in the summer games. And in the past, it probably would have been just a dream. But we have an Olympic training center now in Colorado Springs. And he can go there and learn how to run faster than he's ever run before. So maybe he'll become as good as he believes he can be. And maybe one summer day, when you're watching the 84 games, you just might say, that kid's out there again. This American Dream was brought to you by Miller High Life, the sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Training Center. Today you need an oil this good. You need Quaker State. When your engine's this new, you gotta protect your investment. You need an oil this good. When your engine's this old, it needs extra care. You need an oil this good. Small engines work so hard, they demand an oil this good. These motor oils are refined exclusively from Pennsylvania grade crude. Quaker State is so good, it's America's best-selling motor oil. New cars, old cars, small cars. Today you need Quaker State. You need an oil this good. Wednesday night in the Forum in Los Angeles, 8.30 Pacific time or 11.30 Eastern time. It'll be the Spurs and the Lakers in game five here on CBS. So the Spurs have possession after that timeout. They are behind 14-8. And some of the fans have quickly grown testy in this arena. They have been yelling at the Spurs to move more without the ball. Mitchell. Kareem. 
Banks out to pick. Gervin. Jamal got a hand on him, and Gervin comes back in. Jamal Wilkes' defense against the Iceman is just tremendous. Kareem. Rambus battling for it. Loose picked up Banks. Mitchell. He has the hot hand here for the Spurs. Eight points, first period. Nixon. Kareem easy. Missed the layup. Moore. Spurs can tie it. Mitchell. Banks with a strong offensive rebound. It's a very good run for San Antonio. The timeout was an excellent timeout. They stopped the Lakers a few times, were able to get their break going. They want to run. As much as the Lakers want to run, San Antonio wants to run. Magic. Irvin. Rambus checked the outlet. Moore moves it to Banks into the eighth lane. That's the fast break. That's the style they want to play. The Lakers, everybody thinks it's just the Lakers wanting to run. Also, San Antonio pushed the ball up the floor. Now Pat Raleigh has elected to call a timeout. Comparing a foam shave with an edge gel shave made real news. Now we're making news again with new skin conditioning edge with lanolin. Most men agree. Our newest gel lets you shave closer than the leading foam. Better still, it conditions your skin. So, it feels smoother. Discover new skin conditioning edge with lanolin. For smoother skin, it could be the best news your face ever had. You're about to see a breakthrough in color photography. Pictures taken by the light of a single candle. Kodak introduces the most light-sensitive color print film in the world. A new 35mm film so sensitive, it captures the color of my eyes and the blush of my cheek. A film so sensitive, it almost sees in the dark. New Kodakolor VR1000 film from Kodak. What does the General Motors mark of excellence mean to you? It means the latest techniques in computers, lasers, robotics, and aerodynamics. It means smarter, sleeker, more exciting cars, and the industry's most advanced safety-related research. At GM, excellence isn't just a quality. It's a commitment to always be better and better. We're living up to our commitment. Right now, today, we're the best GM ever. Wednesday, it's an Outer Space Special with host Robin Williams. What's happening? On an exciting cosmic adventure with the strangest creatures ever to hit Earth. E.T. and Friends, Wednesday. The Lakers have missed their last four shots after hitting eight of their first nine, so Pat Riley uses the timeout to get Michael Cooper into the game. He is the sixth man who ignited this Laker team on Friday night when Riley elected to start him the third period. They went on a rampage, 34-19, seven steals by the Lakers, and number 21 with possession was a key figure. Mitchell is out on Cooper, and now Mitchell helps double-team against Green. Cooper is the open man, elects to go inside to Magic, a little left-handed hook. Just when you think you've seen Magic show you all his tricks, he pulls another rabbit out of the hat. Man, George slides in. That's what they have to do. Get the ball in George's hands, even if he forces a couple of shots. The personality of the club is changing without him shooting. And they, they've been successful this year. Go with your strong points. Nixon. Tapped up and missed, and Gervin rebounds. Knocked away by Kareem, and the foul is called. against Magic Johnson. It's only, it's only his first foul. It's a reach over foul. He grabbed Iceman's arm. Very good call. No, no, no harm in the foul, though. Nothing happened nothing happen at all. Mitchell. 
And Mitchell came up over Michael Cooper and fouled him trying to get the offensive rebound. Two on Mitchell. We, we are now in the penalty, the fifth foul. In any period, you go to the penalty, you shoot two fouls. Even if it wasn't a shooting foul in the NBA, Michael Cooper will go to the line. Mitchell knows that Cooper played him extremely well last game. And he wanted to come right back at him with, that, with a quick basket. He missed his shot. Got a little over anxious going to the offensive boards. Now Edgar Jones is going to replace Mitchell. We'll see how healthy Edgar Jones is. Spurs lead by a point. 4.25 to go. And the trap has been set by the Lakers. Mitchell battling for it. Cooper collides at the corner, goes out of bounds with six seconds on the shot clock for the Spurs. Edgar Jones checks in. And Banks will rest. Three on the shot clock. Not sure Gilmore knew it. Moore did get it off in time, but there was a loose ball underneath against Michael Cooper. It is so critical for coaches, especially assistants, if the head coach is making a substitution, to remind everybody when you've just got a few ticks of that shot clock left. Durbin. Blocked by Kareem. Goggles come free. Swing to Magic. He comes in over Moore. And the Lakers go up by one on a powerful dunk. Back to Moore. Durbin no! coming up over the top, foul Magic. Bob McAdoo checks into the game, and Norm Nixon sits. The Lakers have such great passes. Just about everybody on the floor can pass the basketball. Also, as we said before, they, the people have great hands to catch the ball. That's so important. But the unselfishness of the club really starts with Magic Johnson because he looks to pass before he looks to shoot. And that becomes very, very contagious with a ball club. And that's the intangible that can help a club become a champion. Artists double teamed and fouled. Magic closing in on him draws the personal, and that is the second foul on Irvin Johnson. Nice got Wilkes to move a little bit that time, missed the shot. Out of bounds, it'll go over. Quickly. Here's Kareem. Sensational pass again by Magic. Sensational catch. Magic is unbelievable. Unbelievable pass. As good as I've ever seen. Gervin swinging. Oh. Underhand and no, says Eddie Rush. It'll go over to the Lakers. Basket does not count. Foul against San Antonio. And it's a second foul on Gervin. Here's Gervin going to the basket. This is what he has to do. Take some shots. Shot is missed. Back over the top. Very close call. He might have climbed the back a little bit. Now San Antonio is in a little bit of foul trouble with, with Ice with two fouls, but also Magic has two fouls. And Brent, it's about what you said at the top of the show. An awful lot of fouls called early. Could change the complexion for the coaches on how you have to substitute. Five point LA lead. 2.45 to go here in the opening period. Cooper knocks it out of bounds. Nixon. Cooper has played Mitchell. Now he's playing a lead guard. He played a big forward 
Now he's playing the lead guard. So he's now he's back to Mitchell. That's a great versatility for this club. Gervin. Gilmore taps it in. Whistle after the pass to McAdoo. Fouls on Mike Mitchell. That's his third foul. He just ran right over Michael Cooper, but Michael Cooper is known to fall down and take the flop. He's done it several times in the series. Three fouls on Mitchell. Stan Orbach has to make a critical decision now. I think he probably will substitute for Mitchell. Styles of the referees can determine the flow of a professional basketball team. Now we have a technical foul on Mitchell. Here's the play. He runs right over Cooper in this stage. It was a good call. Mitchell shooting the technical. He picks up the technical. Gene Banks will have to come in and take. You have to take him out of the game because sometimes you can pick up a fourth foul very quickly, particularly after technical. So Banks replaces Mike. Six-point lead by the Lakers. And the foul is on Nixon. Johnny Moore steps up to the free throw line. The Spurs' first point at the line in the game. The Lakers have eight. in the middle. Almost stolen by Wilkes. Inside the banks. Works underneath. McAdoo goes down. Fans wanted traveling. Wilkes across to Nixon. Nixon glides in. Saw the open field. And Earl Strom has coming over to the scorer's table. Earl he first, said it was his error. Uh, Earl at first had called, uh, was going to talk, call walk, but now, now he's going to say it was hit, the ball was hit, and give the ball back to San Antonio. Heist going to the basket. Ball was hit by Kareem. Good call and a good play by a veteran official to overrule himself, give the ball back to San Antonio. Nine seconds on the shot clock. And now Rush with the whistle and the foul against McAdoo, who's first. Too much contact in the pivot, but Brent, these are not the games I personally like to see where you're shooting an awful lot of fouls. I think you have to let the players play a little bit more, particularly in a playoff game. There's a lot of motion. This is a major game. If San Antonio loses here today, I think they'll lose the series maybe in L.A. in five. Let them play. Let's keep the best players in the game. Let the players play. Mike Dunleavy checks in. Maybe. 
maybe we should have a no foul out rule in our league. Put somebody in a penalty box? <laughs> Something like that or make, make after the seventh foul, make it a, an extra shot to keep the players in the game so they can decide the outcome. Well, certainly that's what the fans pay good money to see is the stars. Pressure from Edgar Jones on McAdoo. Dunleavy picks up Nixon. Great play by Earl Strom. Both Cooper and Gervin were pushing one another. Instead of calling foul, he just stopped the play, went over to him and said, stop it. Instead of giving Ice his third foul, they only have nine seconds though, to get a shot off. Nixon. Spin. Artist Kareem finally loses control. Gilmore goes out after it and can't save it. It'll go to the Lakers. Lakers will hold it for one shot. There's 27 seconds left. Try to kill the whole clock so that San Antonio cannot get another shot in this quarter. They will go to their five play, which is getting the ball down and deep to Kareem, which is not a bad play. <laughs> One that has worked in the past. Green goes to the weak side. So McAdoo on a cut. And the ball goes in. Gilmore was trying to pull it away. And that's the end of the first period here in San Antonio. Stan Albeck somewhat upset, moving in Earl Strom's direction at the end of the bench. Now he is yelling at Strom, but now he retreats, and we've come to the end of period number one. The Los Angeles Lakers, leading two victories to one, have opened up a 36-29 lead. And right now, the Spurs are a bit unruly. In the world of driving, there is a name that is legend. The name is Dunlop. And the legend lives on the wheels of the world's finest automobiles. A legend proclaimed on racetracks and highways around the globe. Because the driver who knows tires demands the legend, Dunlop. The legend lives. The beauty of a Delta faucet is, when it's on, it's on. And when it's off, it's off. Its washerless design helps keep it from dripping, so it lasts and lasts and lasts. Delta Faucet. We're first because we last. From the time I was a kid, playing basketball came naturally. Basketball comes harder to kids who are mentally retarded. But with the right training, they can learn almost anything. Foul. Foul? Foul, you fouled it. When they do, these special children become Special Olympians. The NBA supports Special Olympics. Why don't you? Please volunteer your time or money. The preceding message has been furnished as a public service by the National Basketball Association. In that first period, Mike Mitchell was carrying the Spurs with eight points, and for the Lakers, Abdul Jabbar had 10, and Johnson and Wilkes, eight apiece. And there is the commissioner of the NBA, Larry O'Brien, and his wife there turning her head, Elba. They had made the trip over here. A little funny anecdote. He did not realize, because he was in the air, that Philadelphia had beaten Milwaukee again. He saw a fan in the airport in Atlanta who told him that Milwaukee had broken through and won the game. And it was not until breakfast this morning that he learned that that series was running 3-0. The Lakers come up. Magic Johnson gives it to McAdoo. McAdoo jumps it to Gervin. And it is going against Gervin, number three. 
Michael Cooper does that so well. He has such great feet. He gets real good position on Gervin. This is a definite charge. He's there very, very early. Gervin had nowhere to go. Big, big foul. The third foul on ice. Gervin leaves, and Johnny Moore has replaced him immediately. Moore and Dunleavy are in the backcourt. Jones, Banks, and Gilmore up front for the Spurs. McAdoo on the move, and Edgar Jones fouled him. Brent, I had breakfast with Norm Nixon this morning, and he, this is the lineup that he really likes playing with. You have Magic himself and Cooper, who are so versatile, they can play three different positions. They'll find one will find himself at forward now and then, at lead guard, at big guard, and he feels this lineup here gives San Antonio the most trouble, and they were the most successful in game number three. We cannot overemphasize the problems of George Gervin in this series. Banks sends it back, and here's Nixon. And quickly, Cooper is over the other side, and magic to the left, and what a beautiful fast break. The Lakers simply go to their spot about as quick as any team I have ever seen. Off of the break, and immediately the lane on the left and the lane on the right will fill up, and then a trailer will come in behind them. Sometimes the trailer is Abdul Jabbar. Magic Johnson generally leading it, and now the Lakers are in command in San Antonio. The Norelco Rototract Razor, the exclusive patented twin action shaving system that shaves as close as a blade. Inside, three floating heads. Rototract works like twin blades to grip hair, raise it up, then razor it off without a nick or cut. Hundreds of times a second for a shave no razor can beat. Give the gift of a close shave, the exclusive twin action Rototract Razors, only from Norelco. On the coast, 9 to 5 can be a lot of fun. After that, it only gets better. Welcome to Miller Time. It's all yours and it's all mine. to the rich, smooth taste of Miller High Life. Out here, survival against the elements is what it's all about. And when it comes to surviving against rust, that's what Krylon Rust Magic is all about. On metal surfaces like this, grueling tests against fog and acid rain proved even the leading national brand can't beat Krylon Rust Magic protection. And Rust Magic dries hours faster. Krylon Rust Magic for tough, fast-drying rust protection. Next, the PGA's top money winners and tournament champions go head-to-head -head in the final round of the Colonial National Invitation. See it here next on CBS Sports. At the Colonial, five golfers tied, four under. Pat Summerall will update that action for Fort Worth at halftime. So the ball goes to San Antonio. And the Lakers put maximum pressure. Now they drop back. They want more to move in this direction. Trying to force him away to his left hand. Dunleavy hit by Nixon and foul by Norm. Nixon's very concerned about Dunleavy shooting the three-point play. He had three three-pointers against him last game. He's very, very much concerned about giving them that shot. He's going to come up on it. Mike Mitchell with three fouls. That's why he's sitting along with the Iceman, George Gervin. Here's Artis coming to the baseline. He's short, loose, out of bounds. Go to the Lakers. So the last San Antonio points were at 109 in the first quarter. L.A. has gone off on an 8-0 streak here. We've got 10-25 left in the first half. Foul away from the ball. It's against McAdoo. It'll go to San Antonio. And Mitchell returns with the three fouls. The reason Stan Allback is doing this, they have not scored, as you said, Brent. They've been outscored eight, eight straight points. 
They could lose the game right here. He does not want to get in the position that they get 15. Mitchell. Short, and here's McAdoo. And quickly the attack. Nixon's in the middle. He goes to Cooper. This is the Greyhounds, as they call them. They can fly. This unit can, can, can run with any team that's ever played basketball. They are so quick. More. And Magic right behind him, just jamming it down their throats. Knocked away, and McAdoo is fouled. Johnny Moore coming around on him. This is sensational to, to watch. Now they have McAdoo to trail the play. He can stick that jumper. Cooper, Magic, Nixon push the ball up the floor. Rambis can replace Kareem and just trail the play, play almost as safety as a defensive player. It's really beautiful to watch the Lakers when they get this running game going. San Antonio had gone three minutes and 19 seconds without a field goal as Kurt Rambis checks in for the Lakers. And the Spurs can't seem to shake off the effects of that withering third period Friday night. That 34-19 run. 
Banks moves the ball to Mitchell. That's the way to attack the trap. L.A. was in their trap. They got the ball, two passes, an easy shot for Mitchell. Got the crowd a little alive. But so far, the crowd hasn't been a good six-man, Brent. Cooper. Nixon. Cooper to screen. Dunleavy comes with him. Cooper moves it to Rambus. Nice shot by Kurt. Dunleavy, three-pointer. Yanked away by Magic. He keeps it, and he'll go to the middle. Magic wanted it back, and McAdoo didn't return it. Over to Rambis and back to Nixon. Now Magic's inside. Unselfishness. Move the ball. Magic is directing everything on the floor. He's telling guys where to go. He ended up with the hoop. But then it's sensational basketball. Gilmore goes in low to Banks. And George Gervin returns with those three fouls. The ball hit the support, was tipped off one of the Lakers' hands. Actually, I thought it might have been tipped off one of San Antonio's hands. But if it hits the back of the support of the basket, it's out of bounds and it should be taken out on the side. Pat Riley's a little upset, but Elstrom has made the call. He's very emphatic about it, so maybe it did go off one of the Lakers' hands. Cooper is taking Gervin. Gilmore goes in low, loose on the turnover. Here come the Lakers. Nixon in the middle. He comes down the lane and drew the foul that time, and it's offense. It's going over to San Antonio. Moore did not foul him. He drew the charge from Nixon. That's the third foul on Nixon. He did move his left hand and hit him right in the face. Very good call by Elstrom. I had really thought that more foul than that play. Sometimes y'all are wrong. It was a very, very good call by Scott. Wilkes comes down defensively on Gervin. He's chasing him right now. And their style is to try to deny George the ball. Much more effective when he gets it. And Cooper flying. And this time Moore did foul. Cooper goes into the support, looks up rather angrily. Moore said he did not mean to hurt him. The big play on this was Magic getting the ball to Cooper off the boards. He gets fouled, but Magic rebound the ball. Uh, before he came down, the ball was in Cooper's hand at half court. Magic's unbelievable what he's doing out here on both ends of the floor. I think he's the closest thing since Oscar Robinson. Robertson was the total floor leader, and I think Magic Johnson. In other words, it's his game until he decides what to do with the basketball. Very good, Brent. And also, he's so big and strong. We've seen him in the hotel. He's really a big guy and, uh, and really a nice individual on top of it all. Moore goes in to Gervin. Blocked. Banks back up. Bodies every which way. And Magic comes out with the basketball. Comes right down the middle. He drew the foul from Moore. Again, Magic got the rebound, went 94 feet with it this time, decided that the people in the, on the wings were being guarded very well. Here he comes. He's looking everywhere. You can see his eyes looking everywhere. Decided to take it to the basket. That could have been the charge. I think Moore might have been there in position, but Magic is totally in charge of this game for the last six minutes since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has been on the bench. For the game, 13 points, five rebounds, six assists. They get the triple-double in the first half. <laughs> I wonder what that triple-double pays, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get to the window on that? <laughs> Here's Banks inside. Get out. Banks 
Ships it to Moore. Inside, knocked away by Wilkes. Restolen by Moore. Cooper trying to deny Durbin the ball. They are simply just getting up on top of George. Try to keep the ball away from him if they can. Banks missing. Knocked back in. Pulse was there. So too was Banks. Give the walker that field goal. He needs it. <laughs> Very physical on the floor. This bumper between Wilkes and Moore. Another great catch by Magic. Another great catch by Wilkes. We've said great so many times, but it's not a redundancy. They're doing it every time down the floor. Mitchell powers in. It's easier to drive to the basket when Kareem's not in the game. He took that straight up without worrying about anything. If Kareem's in the game, there's an intimidation factor. It's a big difference with Rambis in the game. Lakers will call a timeout. They'll huddle around Pat Riley, who a year ago took over this club from Paul Westhead, directed them to a championship, and he's got them on the move again against the Spurs. I've got one daughter in college and one getting married. And the last thing I need right now is to buy a new car. So every now and then I take the old Datsun down to Midas. Over the years, I've been a Midas for struts, brakes, a muffler, and I've always gotten a good deal. Oh, I'll treat myself to a new car one day. But right now, I've got other things I'd rather spend my money on. Trust the Midas touch. Converse All-Star. They started out on the basketball court, but now... They're everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Converse All-Stars. Look for them everywhere. Official athletic shoe of the 1984 Olympic Games. No matter what the job, I do it like a pro. With a home light ST120. The string trimmer that comes with a free blower attachment. It also comes with automatic line advance and without a bothersome electric cord. Perfectly balanced, rugged, powerful. If this home light can't cut it, <laughs> that's the only other thing that will. Nobody does the job around the home or farm like Home Light Jacobson. Now get a free blower attachment on even more models. See your Home Light Jacobson dealer for details. Next Saturday, the National Crown is at stake. Pepperdine meets defending champion UCLA in the NCAA Men's Volleyball Championship. Next Saturday on CBS Sports. Back in Los Angeles, you remember Keith Erickson as a great basketball player, but he could play a little volleyball too. And his school, UCLA, will be going for their third straight. Here's a replay, a great pass by Magic to Wilkes on the baseline. That pass is 25 feet, gets there quickly. Here it is here again from another angle right down the middle. He threw that so hard, almost like a baseball pitcher making a drone a fastball, and Wilkes would.
half when they've made their run to open up a 15 point lead. Milwaukee must win. Or they'll go in four straight. Hard to figure, isn't it, in the NBA? Here's a team that puts away the Boston Celtics four in a row, and they can't break through even at home against the Philadelphia 76ers. Tough sport to handicap. Johnson goes to Jamal. Mitchell hands to Moore. Serving. Here's Magic. Green was going to catch a little rest if they were going to go to the fast break, but now that it's half court, he'll come up there and see what he can do. And as he was backing in on Pulse, there was a foul called by Earl Strong. It shows you the weapons that L.A. has. Kareem really wasn't going to come down, as you said, Brent, on, on offense. He decided, I might as well get down there, get in the play. Right away, they go in to try to take advantage against Billy Pauls. The foul was called against Pauls, and it shows you all the different weapons that the Lakers have. The Lakers are shooting for the 18th time from that free throw line. They are now 17 of 18 from the line, and the Spurs are but 3 of 4. And as we said at the top of the show, if you're a road coach, you don't mind seeing Earl Strong show up. And there's the field goal percentage. The Lakers can blast away there, too. Nice man sends it back to Moore. Coming inside on Kareem. Kareem did not want to draw the foul, so he stood there, and Cooper breaks free. No foul on Banks, I can't believe it. I thought he was taking one intentionally for a moment. Here's Mitchell. I'm so incredulous of what happened at the other end. That's the difference right there in having Kareem in the game. Before Mitchell took the ball right to the basket, his no foul. That was that called against Cooper. Now we have a technical foul. The technical goes against Stan Albeck and the uh, and the Spurs, and Magic will come down here to shoot the free throw. Here's Mitchell going to the basket. Here's the technical foul by Magic. We'll see Mitchell going to the basket, and Kareem will come over to help out Rambis before Mitchell just laid it in the basket. The intimidation factor of having Jabbar in the lineup. The ice man. And he'll come to the free throw line. The foul's on Wilkes. Wilkes has done a sensational job on Gervin. Gervin is 2 for 11 from the floor in this game. He's getting enough shots, but he's not making them. So that's been the big difference offensively for San Antonio. Ice has not been able to put the ball in the basket. Give Wilkes a lot of credit. And that was their first free throw this period. That can get you excited if you're a coach, particularly when you're at home. I can understand sometimes why guys do get technical. Yes, you would understand <laughs> that. Know. How many did you have? Highest of oh, one season? We can't talk about that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it on ice. Shoots it to Wilkes. He drew the foul on Banks. And that is number three. There is some contact between Magic Johnson and Jamal Wilkes this afternoon. And by that I mean they know exactly what they're going to do every single time down the floor. And they're maximizing it. Almost every time down the floor, Magic looks for Wilkes. And they have some contact going. ESPN or whatever you want to call it. ESP, ESPN, whatever you want to They have a code. <laughs> Well, thank you for that uh, right now. <laughs> Here's good. <laughs> the ice comes through. Magic. Mix sends it back to Magic. Magic coming in on Mike Mitchell, drew the foul, and if it's against Mitchell, that would be his fourth. 
with Bob McAdoo watching. And it was indeed against Mitchell. And Edgar Jones will have to replace him so he doesn't pick up number five. So with 54 seconds to go, Mitchell exits. And Jones, who bruised the foot, re-enters. That entry was sustained Friday night. Oh, a chance to get it in one half. But I don't know if he can get three more rebounds here in 54 seconds. I think he's already got three more. He's got at least ten. I see. <laughs> Paltz. Banks. Banks coming up, but there was a loose ball foul. Loose ball foul on Edgar Jones going over the back of Steve Mix. That was a big hoop right there. If Gervin could have made that hoop, they call it on Gene Banks. That will be his fourth foul also. That's very, very critical. I thought it was on Jones, but it went with Banks. Four each on Banks and Mitchell. That's, that's a big play in this game, particularly with only 24 seconds, 23 seconds left in the game. I think Edgar Jones tried to get it. He raised his hand down here. He faked me out, but I thought it was on him also. Right now, the Lakers have Jamal Wilkes playing guard in the last few minutes. They're making a lot of substitutions to take out Magic. Cooper's coming in for defense. Good, good strategy by Pac. Getting a better defensive player in because you probably won't get another shot at this stage of the game. There's only 23 seconds left in the game. In the half. Pat Riley is a better game tactician than a lot of veteran coaches in the league assumed he would be. He has worked very hard at his craft. They come to trap by the Lakers. Jones slams into Rambis. Blocking foul is the call. And that's the first against Kirk. Now Pat Miles might elect to get some of the offensive players back in. You have six seconds. Sometimes you will make a conversion by bringing your offensive players in because you'll get, you should get the last shot and you don't have to worry about foul time. But he's going to stick with the lineup he's got right now. Excuse me. Here comes Magic. I felt he would go that way. And Roger Fegley checks in for the Spurs. That's the key banks. And Gervin will go out because they don't want to get in foul trouble. A lot of chess being played right now for the last six seconds. But Magic will get the ball in his hands and he'll create something. Dwight Jones will be in the pivot in this lineup. Cooper, Magic, the backcourt. Mixon Wilkes up front. Pressure, the ball goes to Magic. Five seconds. Knock free. Magic runs it down. Hits so. End of the first half. The pressure is squarely on the San Antonio Spurs. Stan Albeck has to go inside that locker room right now and convince this basketball team that they're going to have to play hard. Otherwise, they'll be on the brink of extinction. Used to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Congratulations, you coached a pretty mean game. Well, I had a pretty good teacher. Did I teach you the part about the winning coach buying the loan, Brown? You got it. Give me ten minutes. I got to go yell at my players. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. So tell me, what'd you say to your teacher? Told him we were out coached. Let it be low and brown. When a business grows, it often grows out of control. Simple procedures become gigantic problems. Things like billing, filing, and shipping become too big to handle the old way. Why not get one of IBM's low-cost small computers like Datamaster? It puts you back in control, and it can grow. Here's to a great future. As your business grows. At Ford Motor Company, quality is job one. 
This is one of 1,100 employee involvement groups formed by Ford and the UAW. New feature and a great improvement. This group reviewed the fit and finish objectives for the instrument panel on the new 84 Ford Tempo. Much more sturdily built. Employee involvement, another reason Ford achieved the highest quality rating of any major American car or truck maker. And Ford quality is job one. 1952, George Stephen invents the incredibly durable Weber kettle. Incredible! It soon becomes the best loved way to broil burgers and roast the Thanksgiving turkey. We love it. But nobody loves cleaning out the ashes. We don't love that. Weber engineers, deep in thought, invent the One Touch system. Weber's One Touch opens to circulate heat and seal in the juices. Ooh. Weber's One Touch closes to put out the fire. Ah. Best of all, Weber's One Touch sweeps out all the ashes. Thank you. You're welcome. The Weber One Touch, only from Weber. Hi everybody, I'm Pat O'Brien. Today at the half, a little bit of everything. A story about some fans known as the Bums, a profile of a coach you may not know much about but could very well be the coach of the year. And our first story about an owner. Not just any owner, he's a showman, a maverick, a self-made millionaire who's living out the fantasy of just about every sports fan. His name is Jerry Buss, the owner of the Los Angeles Lakers. Dr. Jerry Buss has fun. At 50, he's one of L.A.'s most eligible bachelors. But he also mingles with folks who are not just his fans, but his teams. He's a people owner, I would say. Uh, he gives me tremendous freedom. He never interferes. Uh, he's a fan. You can go out with him, you can sit back and uh, talk about a lot of other things besides basketball. And you don't have to be scared or tight, you know, uh, scared to ask him a question. How much fun are you having? <laughs> Oh, great, great times, uh, Pat. I, I mean, I find myself in a position where I'm doing precisely what every big sports fan would like to do. For a poor boy from Wyoming, it's a fantasy life. He bought the legendary Pick Fair, the home built by Douglas Fairbanks for Mary Pickford, and to this day it still looks as though a movie star lives there. Well, almost. He is indeed a man who has everything, a multi-million dollar real estate fortune, the L.A. Kings, the Forum, and he's happy, too. In some ways, his tastes are simple, like his coin collection, but his prize is the Lakers, which he bought in 1979 from Jack Kent Cooke. What kinds of attitude changes did you expect? Well, first of all, there was an attitude change, I think, in the city, don't you, when you took over the Lakers from Jack Kent Cooke? Did you... Um, I, I think that uh, there was a formality associated with sports that uh, uh, some of the people in the city didn't like. I tried to bring to the Lakers a character which was the same as the city has. Uh, to us, that's entertainment. And showbiz it is. Out with the organ, in with the brass band. And girls, the Laker girls. Contemporary dance to contemporary music in the very contemporary forum. Uh, white wine with ice, large beer. All this makes the forum look like a cabaret. It is the latest in thing to do in Los Angeles. And throw in some Hollywood, Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees, Walter Matthau, Jack Nicholson, and then lift the curtain on perhaps the most entertaining basketball show in the NBA. Has all this gone to Buss's head? I happen to be one of those persons that lived and died with the fortunes of the Los Angeles sports teams. So. When I had the opportunity to own one of those teams and control the fortunes, it was like a dream come true. When escrow closed on the forum that night, they turned out the lights and everything. And I walked down and I put a chair in the middle of the basketball floor, right in the middle of the floor, and no one was around. Just a little bit of lighting from the exit signs and this type of thing. And I just stretched out, lighted a cigarette, and sat back and thought, I'm going to enjoy a very wonderful feeling because, after all, I own this place. The doctor has a Ph.D. in chemistry, and he certainly has the chemistry in Los Angeles for many more enjoyable seasons there. Now, from the owners to the fans, from Los Angeles to San Antonio. Now, if you haven't noticed them in the first half, take note here. A group of fans who always seem to entertain themselves as well as everybody else around them. San Antonio's Hemisphere Arena looks like your average arena an hour before game time, but take a look at Section 20 at tip-off, and you know it's far from ordinary. They call themselves the Baseline Bums. They're not really bums, but they are a sight. 
They used to hang around minor league games here, but in 1973, when the Spurs came to town, they moved from the bleachers to the baseline. Oh, and they don't really sit on the baseline either. Something about being too rowdy. Up behind the basket in the middle, you can spot them all right. And if you didn't know their history, you might wonder, who are these guys anyway? Who are we? Look at us. We are, we are the official cheerleading squad of the San Antonio Spurs. Who are we? Everybody know who we are. Well, the name speaks for itself. Bums. The bums don't do road trips. When the Spurs are gone, they get together and pretend they're back at the arena chanting. And now with the Lakers in town, the Spurs have more than the A-Train. They've got the bums on board as well. It's a lot of teams that will not come to San Antonio because they know we are here. That's a fact, Jack. That's a fact, Jack. Okay, when we come back, a look at the coach of the Milwaukee Bucks, a former player turned coach who is as good at theatrics as he is at coaching. That and more when At the Half continues after a word from your local stations. It's the third annual Rafter Raising Night as country comes home with Mac Davis, Alabama, the Oak Ridge Boys, Sylvia, Glenn Campbell, and many more Wednesday. This is CBS. We are back at the half. I'm Pat O'Brien. We've shown you stories about fans, about an owner, and now the coach. They call him Nelly, and around the NBA, you'd have a tough time finding somebody with a bad word about Don Nelson, the coach of the Milwaukee Bucks. On the court, maybe the coach of the year. He's had a team with a succession of incredible injuries, but he's had a remarkable season this year. And as I watched him in Milwaukee, I was amused by his intensity, by his energy, which seems to cross over to his players. Far and away coaching is the toughest job that I've ever had. And I've had a lot of jobs in my life. For seven years, Don Nelson has brought his intensity to a team that in return gave him four division titles. Don Nelson is, is the hub. Uh, everything we do is built around him. Nelson learned some of his coaching skills from his own coaches as a player, notably Red Auerbach when he was with the great Celtic teams of the 1960s. Well, he's a dirty player. He used to tug and trip people and use stick them all the time. I think he's, right now he's a better coach than he was a player. As a player, Nelly didn't exactly gain superstar status. He was a journeyman forward who played with, you guessed it, intensity. And when he took it off for the last time, they retired his jersey. I think that it probably meant more to me than uh, most of the players who are up there because to have an average player's number retired i've never heard of such a thing and um, i was very, i'm very proud of that having been through this routine before don nelson knows how to relieve the rigors of pro basketball and make his players feel at ease i make it the dollar yes 
But the Bucks haven't been able to earn championship rings. And having won five titles during his playing days, he wants his players to share that special feeling. Well, my dream uh, has been and always will be to, to win a world championship. It's the most important thing, I think, for any coach to do that. Wishing and hoping and thinking and praying, planning and dreaming. Well, it may only be wishing and hoping for the Bucks this year. The way I look at it, uh, our time is running out, really, um, to win a world championship or, or to have a legitimate shot at it, simply because our center is getting old and he's starting to break down. We're not going to be a great team very much longer. When Bob retires, we may in some ways have to rebuild. Nelly wasn't born yesterday. He knows he's up against a superb Philadelphia team, but he doesn't give up either. Everybody strives to be the best, and I'm trying to do that, um, and I want my ball club to do that. The coach, the fans, and owner, and oh yes, a birthday. It's Coach Don Nelson's birthday today, and we give him our best. That's at the half from here. Let's go back to Brent Musburger. All right, Pat here at the half. The Lakers with a 12-point advantage over San Antonio, and they lead in this series already two victories to one. And right after the NBA action here, of course, it's the final round of the Colonial from Fort Worth, Texas. To tell us what went wrong in the first two rounds, let's go to Pat Summerall. It's amazing what effect the weather has on a golf tournament. The first two days here in Fort Worth were played under ideal conditions. The greens were fast, the course was in excellent condition. Yesterday, the weather turned sour. 16th hole, for example, a par three. First two days, players were using sevens and perhaps eight irons. Yesterday, it went from a two to a three iron. Weather conditions today, just just as adverse. Temperature 53 degrees. It feels colder than that. The wind out of the northwest at 10 to 15 miles an hour and the forecast is equally as bad. The leaderboard, well, anybody still has a chance. A five-way tie for the lead. But one of the most important things that I feel that we have coming your way is an interview with the Texas Hawk, Ben Hogan, who has not talked for a long, long time, does talk with our own CBS golf analyst, Ken Venturi. We'll have 13 minutes of that coming your way. Right now, this is Pat Summerall, CBS Sports in Fort Worth, Texas. That will be coming up after the basketball. The pressure here in San Antonio is squarely on the Iceman. He has been contained by the Lakers. And we'll be back for the second half in just a moment. I've got an unfair advantage over these guys. My looks? Are you kidding? I've got the Gillette Atra. They don't. It's got the advantage of a pivoting head. Atra's better than twin blade razors that don't pivot. See, they don't always stay on my beard, but my Atra pivots to keep both blades on my beard longer. I get a better shave. See, close, comfortable. Get the Gillette Atra and get the Atra advantage. So who said life was fair? <laughs> The future of car wax is new Bodyguard by Simon Eyes. A durable wax that's also fast. How? Two kinds of silicones. Low friction silicones cut drag for fast waxing. And high durability silicones bond to your car's body to guard against weather, guard against detergents. And the proof is incredible beading. The future of car wax is Bodyguard by Simon Eyes. Liquid paste or express spray. Kentucky Fried Chicken and I do what we're best at. I concentrate on racing cars, and all Kentucky Fried Chicken concentrates on is fried chicken. Not burgers or pizza, just making chicken like no one else. So, whenever I'm hungry, I pull in for a pit stop. Because I just love to fuel up on this. It's finger licking good. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken. I'm Lenny Wilkins of the Seattle Supersonics. The National Basketball Association supports the work of Variety Clubs International on behalf of underprivileged and handicapped children throughout the world. As a life patron member of Variety, I can tell you that no one stands taller than when stooping to help a child. Stand tall. Give the kids in your area a hand by helping the local Variety Club. The preceding message has been furnished as a public service by the National Basketball Association. 
Kevin, George Gervin was 3 of 12 in the first half. What's the problem? What are the Lakers doing to him? The problem really is Keith Wilkes. He's done a fantastic job defending him. He's kept him away from the ball. Here's Jamal Wilkes playing him without the basketball, denying him the ball all over the place. Keeps himself between Gervin and the basketball. There he fronts him in the post. Great defense, and when Gervin does catch the ball, they double-team him. Now on the other side, the Lakers have been awesome on the attack because of Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson has keyed so many fast breaks and so many direct passes to basket. Sometimes you get an assist that's not, not a perfect assist. Kareem blocks the shot. Nixon picks up the ball in the middle of the fast break. He can also lead the break over to Magic. There's Magic going for the layup. And that they've had so many key blocks that have led to breaks for baskets. Gervin long pass to Moore. Moore to Banks. Banks back to Gilmore. Very good movement of the ball. And the San Antonio needs more of that. And I think, Kevin, we're going to have to second, go, second guess the San Antonio coach just a bit. I'm not sure that he's gone to his bench when he should. Artis Gilmore probably should have been out there on the floor. I'm not going to put Kevin on the spot here because he's another coach of the NBA, and I, I don't think that's necessary. You have to take him on. But he left a couple of players out there, and they picked up their fourth fouls, Mitchell and Banks. Artis Gilmore, with one, was watching down the stretch. The Spurs cannot afford any mistakes this half. They're down by 12, that's not an impossible run by any means in the NBA, but they've got to play a lot better than they have. And Nixon drills them right away from the corner. Here's Durbin. Kareem, Edgar Jones, Moore, Artis, Kareem, and on the pass in, Artis Gilmore clamping down behind him. And that's his second personal. Deflected by Gervin, and Artis comes out on the move. Magic slows up the ice. Gervin dishes to Artis. Very good stop for San Antonio. The beginning of the third period is tremendously important when you're down by 10, 12 points, and they've come out real strong. Green. No basket. Ball's down and deep to Kareem. Gervin going to help. The bump by Gilmore. The foul is called on Gilmore. His third foul. Jamal. Intercepted Nixon. Magic. Mitchell. Edgar Jones and Cooper collided. Now they're exchanging words. Got a timeout now. So Cooper and Jones go at it here early in the second half, and we'll be right back. Grow a beard, huh?
Not under my roof. But, Dad, this electric razor is rough on my face. Try electric shave. It does for an electric razor what lather does for a blade. See, electric shave's special formula dries your beard, so whiskers stand up, lubricates your face so your razor glides easily. Electric shave's great, but where's the singing? Electric shave! Electric shave does for an electric razor what lather does for a blade. You don't need a haircut, Jim. You need Brill Cream. Brill Cream? Sure. Your hair is short enough, but it's a mess. It sure is. Brill Cream's so concentrated, just a little dab keeps hair healthy looking and in control all day. Look, I'll put a little dab of Brill Cream here. Nothing here. See? Even with the hair blower, the Brill Cream side doesn't fly around. Without Brill Cream, hair flies around. Terrific. You're right. With Brill Cream, a little dab will do you. I'll tell you, trying to get cultured isn't easy. We just went to the opera and we didn't understand a word. Yeah, but that big guy in those tights sure could sing. Well, at least we still drink a very civilized beer. Light beer from Miller. Light tastes great. But us impresarios drink it because it's less filling. We can't afford to get filled up. Tomorrow night we're going to the ballet. Yeah, I sure hope they do it in English. Me too. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Wednesday night on CBS Sports, Game 5 of the Western Conference Finals. The San Antonio Spurs and the world champion Los Angeles Lakers. Wednesday night on CBS Sports. Here's how the incident developed. Watch Jones from the right, left shoulder, into Cooper. Try to brush him out of there. Foul is called on Edgar Jones, and then he reacts angrily to what Cooper had said and points a finger at him. But just as quickly, a couple of the Laker veterans moved in on Michael Cooper and marched him away from a possible problem. But you do not bench a player in this situation, not by any means. You leave him on the floor right now, and he'll come back eyeball to eyeball with him. Cooper runs, does not shake his hand. He walks right past Edgar Jones. Lakers possession, up by 10 right now. Send it to Magic. Move it to Cooper. Nix it. The crowd was complaining about Kareem knocking Cooper, not knocking Moore down and leaving Nixon open. And uh, Nixon got a wide open jump shot because of that. Morgan! Moore. That's such a tough shot because he took it off the wrong foot. Abnormal from, from his regular shot. But he's had a great touch for a big man off of any type of ball. More. Back to Nixon. Jamal. Artist misses. Tapped in by Mitchell. Lakers are six of seven here starting the second half. San Antonio also hot. They're seven of eight. Kareem. Irvin, <laughs> double team, back to Moore. Missing. Edgar Jones. Artis. Also through the foul. Nice play by George Gervin. He drove to the basket. He's seen the double team. He hit Gilmore for the three-point play opportunity. And when you look at the situation of this game, you would kind of think 
But the Spurs are very fortunate to be only down by eight. If Artis makes it at seven, it seems like LA has dominated the game, but a seven-point lead is not a hit. Great pass by Gilmore to Gilmore. Takes it up with power for a three-point play opportunity. That was the third foul on Kareem. Good defensive play by Norm Nixon. He's seen it looking for fast transition. Here's Kareem on the previous play. Getting blocked by Edgar Jones. But gets the ball back and scores. Gilmore rebounds. Here's Moore. Mitchell from the 14, 15 foot area can shoot with anybody in the league. Into Kareem. And he was fouled. Gilmore was behind him and Moore came in to help out. This Wheel game is getting so physical, Brent, that this time the officials have to start calling the petty foul or else we could have some trouble. That's four on Moore. When you buy a dozen new Top Flights or Top Flight XLs, you get something extra. Distance. Because T to Green, Top Flight, and the higher flying Top Flight XL are the longest balls. And now they're the longest dozen, too. That's because the new Top Flight bonus pack makes your money go further. While supplies last, you get an extra three free balls with the Top Flight bonus pack. Three free balls. The longest balls are now the longest dozen. Shooting on location is a real challenge. But how good a picture is can depend on how good the paper is it's printed on. That's why the photographers I know use Kodak paper. Not just for the pictures we earn our living with, but for personal pictures, like these. Because what a picture says on the back says a lot about how it looks on the front. Kodak paper. The only way to be sure you get it is to ask for it at a retailer displaying this new sign. I'm Rick Fowler, State Farm Agent Orlando, Florida, speaking for the thousands of State Farm agents around the country. With State Farm's Home Alert Discount, you'll save money on your homeowner's insurance. With deadbolt door locks, a smoke alarm, and a fire extinguisher. You can't lose. You save money on your homeowner's insurance, and you protect your home. Ask a State Farm agent about the Home Alert Discount. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. A tough physical game here in San Antonio. Number of players. Possible foul trouble. Banks, Mitchell, and Moore of the Spurs, four apiece. Abdul Jabbar, McAdoo, and Nixon, three each. That reflects not only how tight Rush and Strom have called it, but also how physical it has been. And it's perhaps more physical right now than at any time in the afternoon. There is extreme contact underneath the basket. San Antonio is digging in. Mitchell deflects it. Cooper goes to run it down. Out of bounds. Lakers ball. The ball was deflected and sometimes should have went off the 24 second clock, but they really have missed the play. Stano back has picked it up now. When the ball is thrown in bounds and there's a deflection and the ball is hit by someone on the floor, you have to start the clock. It should only be about 21 seconds, and they gave three extra seconds to the Lakers. Stan picked it up very well. They got it down. 21 seconds. Good play. Very good job by Stan Allback to pick that up. People say, oh, what's the difference with three seconds? But we've seen a lot of things happen in three seconds in the NBA. 6.45 in the third. So, comes back on Moore and fouled him. Great 
Brent, the bench is going to decide this game because a lot of players are going to be sitting down with five fouls. Guys like Mix, Landsberger, guys like Fagley might become very important. Gilmore has it not three. Here's Nixon. Nixon gets it back. Kareem deflected. Jamal. Loose balls going to the Lakers. Kareem tap back to the Lakers. And a foul call and will go to the Spurs. Loose ball foul call on Kareem will be his fourth foul. Ball will be put in bounds by Gervin. This is a big basket right now at this stage for San Antonio to try to cut it to five points. Artis behind Kareem. That was done on sheer power by Artis just pushing Kareem out of the way, getting inside position, and jamming it for two points. Maybe I wasn't the greatest player of all time, but fans, they forgive and forget. Uh, when I go in here, they'll be buying me my favorite beer, light beer from Miller. You, Bob, uh, you guys? Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, these fans, I love them. They know us ex-big leaguers drink light because it's less filling and it tastes great. Well, can't keep the gang waiting. <laughs> the fans are always joking. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Wow, they're having a good time in there. I own 15 cars without Sears Auto Centers, could only own 10. Cut the cost of car care at Sears National Automotive Sale. Save 50% on Aramid belted radials, guaranteed for 42,000 miles. Save $18 on Sears 48 battery, only $39.99 with trade-in. Heavy-duty shocks are only $5.66 each plus labor. And Spectrum 10W40 oil is only 89 cents. At Sears Tire and Auto Centers, we install confidence day and night. Sears. What's great about the suit spectacular at Sears is, right now you can buy two suits for just $99. $99 is great. I'll second that. Or, or choose, choose two, two suits, suits like these for just $119. 119, 119 suits me. Me too. Or two wool blend suits for just $139. $139? That's where the second look. Lots of looks to choose from now. So come in while quantities last. And suit yourself twice at the suit spectacular at Sears. It's an all-new one-hour Peanuts event. I can't stand the suspense. Charlie Brown a leader, Peppermint Patty a caddy, Snoopy a hero. It's an adventure, Charlie Brown, Monday. Here's the power of 7'2", 260-pound Artis Gilmore. He muscled free, got behind Kareem, 15 for the game. One of the reasons why he was the Miller High Life player of the game back in game two. And at the conclusion of this game, Kevin and I will select the most valuable player. And in conjunction with the award, Miller will present a check for $1,000 to the Special Olympics in the player's name. Five minutes and 34 seconds to go in period number three here in San Antonio, Texas. The Los Angeles Lakers, the defending champions, have seen their 12-point halftime lead whittle down to five. The Spurs are playing tough, aggressive basketball right now. Whatever Stan Albeck said at the intermission seems to have worked. They have come out with a vengeance here. Magic. Nixon. Jamal with three on the shot clock, and it's the Spurs. Gervin. Loose. Here come the Lakers. The Iceman still without his touch. Nixon. Spurs off to Moore. Moore negotiates. Yanked down by Edgar Jones. McAdoo. 
Lakers are taking an awful lot of jump shots right now. Defense of San Antonio is much improved. Stan Albach made real good adjustments defensively, and it's paying off. Gilmore behind the defense. Jump the quickly. Hey. Foul's called against Gilmore. That'll be his fourth foul. I thought Cooper looked like he was going to wipe him out on the play. Pass from Magic to Cooper. It wasn't a wipeout. Good call by Earl Strom. Cooper did not use his left arm to ward off Gilmore as I originally thought. Billy Pauls will replace Gilmore. Gene Banks will check in for the Spurs. Edgar Jones leaves. That was straight one-on-one -on -one basketball by Mitchell to beat Rambis. One-on-five basketball. He goes the distance. More. Rambis. Magic and Moore duel. Moore crashes to the floor. Cooper. Oh. McAdoo dueling Pulse. Foul will be on Pulse. Good job on the offensive boards by McAdoo. They're in the penalty. It will be two shots for McAdoo, who seems to have come alive. The first game he played well. I think it was on adre adrenaline. Last two, not as well, but he looks like he's in much better condition now after getting some playing time in the first three games. The Spurs have shot 75% in this quarter, and that has gotten them back into the game. times down the floor. Gervin called his own play. We have not seen that before in the series. He looks like he's really in it right now. McAdoo stolen by Banks, and they're at it on the other side. Moore and Cooper, and they're exchanging heated words. No blows have been thrown. They're still, now they're coming up. Cooper and Johnny Moore got into it verbally. Here comes the Iceman. He's ready now. This is the best I've seen him play so far in the series. Magic. Rambus. We will show you exactly what happened. That is Gervin being helped up off the floor as he went down. Now, watch back. You'll see more pushing Cooper away. Cooper grabs back on a wrist. Came in toward him. The two then exchanged words as the ball went down to the other end of the floor. There were no punches thrown. They were back at it right now while we were showing the replay, talking to one another. Stan Allback did a wise thing. Take out more, get him settled down because you cannot have your lead guard out of control in the game. He's got to have control of the situation. Cooper has magic on the floor being the lead guard, so it's good substitution by Stan Allback to give more a little rest at this stage. 26 points for Magic Johnson. Mitchell. Here comes Cooper. 
Paltz rebounds. Thanks. Here's Ice. to a point, 128 in the third. Cooper fouled. Dunleavy hooked him going by, and Michael comes up to the line. it up for the Spurs. Cooper's out. The trap is set. They come to the ball. Here's Banks. Jumps back to Dunleavy. Johnson and Paltz were tied up inside. The legal defense, Brent, against Magic Johnson called by Eddie Rush. The Lakers were in the trap. He was in the lane three seconds without guarding an opponent. When Dunleavy's in the game, the Lakers like the trap. They feel more is bigger and handles the ball a little bit better. Here's Ice, blocked by McAdoo. Outlet Wilkes. Magic gives it back. Great defensive play by Mike Mitchell. Fouls called on Kurt Rambis. Tony, the fourth team foul would not put him in the penalty. Here's the break. Back to Magic Mitchell from the weak side with the block. Nice play by Mitchell to come from the weak side to block Keith, um, Jamal Wilkes on the drive. Kurt Rambis on a loose ball. Now it is a penalty. Billy Pulse is a very good foul shooter for the, for the big man. It's getting so aggressive underneath. We could have just about everybody in foul trouble in this game before it's over. The crowd has really gotten into it today, Brent. The best I've seen them. And this can be a wild crowd in San Antonio. Foul by Dunleavy. He had posted the smaller man up and Magic tossed it to him and Michael was almost pressed into making that personal foul. Look for the Lakers to trap. There's 29 seconds left in the quarter. San Antonio will probably like to hold it for one shot. The Lakers will probably go into the half court trap to deny him a, a, a good shot or come up with a steal. That one has stayed close throughout the afternoon. The 76ers trying to close the Bucks out in four. Spurs can tie it, and the roof will come off here in the hemisphere if they do. It'll be a pick and roll with Dunleavy and Billy Pauls. Look out for a three-point play attempt for the last shot. With two seconds to go in the period, the Spurs missed. And the Lakers led by 12 at the half. That is down to two. And they are alive at the hemisphere. We'll return after these messages from your local stations. This is CBS.
Fantastic. The preceding message was furnished by the National Basketball Association. The NBA on CBS is sponsored by Electric Shave. Electric Shave does for an electric razor what lather does for a blade. Light beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. And by Top Flight and Top Flight XL golf balls. Now in high visibility orange, yellow, and whiter than white. You cannot beat the Texas-style hospitality that we have enjoyed here in the city of San Antonio. And right now, it's a little hostile on the floor here of the Hemisphere. We have got six players with four fouls apiece as we start the money period. It is 98-96. The Lakers leading the Western Conference Final, two victories to one, are trying to assume a stranglehold on the Spurs, who have come back scratching and clawing here in the second half. And their fans are very aware of it. They are as live as they have been at any time since the series came to Texas. Pulse. Well, they came out trapping. Billy Paul took the jumper and ties the score 98 all. Nixon. Rambus, he was being pressed. Went out of bounds, and we go to the Spurs, and Rambus is still back there tangled up with photographers. He almost came back in and got a hand on the ball. Durbin didn't realize it. Going for a lead is Mitchell. Magic. Protected by Durbin, and they're at it. Cooper underneath. Banks moving in. Now Durbin. They're pushing Banks back. And I believe Earl Strong may eject a couple of players. Cooper is out. All back in Raleigh are getting into a little bit also out and here. And Banks is out. <laughs> Michael Cooper and Gene Banks. <laughs> have been kicked out with 11 minutes to go here in the fourth period. In just a matter of time, Brent. That's a heck of a way for Gene Banks to celebrate his 24th birthday. Now here is exactly what happened. Here's Magic coming down the floor, always looking over to see who will be open. Drive to the basket, but off the ball, Bat Cooper, Bat uh, Gervin, and Banks were involved in the play. And it was a situation that it wasn't that individual play. Here's the play from the other angle. Gervin blocks the shots. Banks and Cooper going at it. But it had built up from several different situations in the game. So both teams lose a key man. Michael Cooper coming off Pat Riley's bench, and Gene Banks was one of Stan Albeck's starters. But I think even more importantly on the play is the fact that George Gervin was whistled for his fifth personal foul. And that's why Magic Johnson is at the free throw line. He will be shooting. So Gervin with five fouls. Banks ejected a double blow for the Spurs. It'd be wise right now for the officials to call a timeout, an official timeout, let both teams rest for a couple of minutes and settle down and then continue on with the game because this could start very quickly again because this crowd right here gets involved and they get very, very hostile down here in San Antonio. Of course, the series resumes Wednesday night in the Forum. 11.30 Eastern will be the live start on CBS. That's 8.30 for the fans who are going to the Forum in Los Angeles. Now for Magic with 27 points, Johnny Moore. 
on the floor, and Gervin with five fouls. Stan Albeck is forced to get him off the floor. Stan Albeck's done an excellent job maneuvering his players around that have been in foul trouble. That's very difficult. Excellent job bench coaching. In the second half. Gilmore. Knocked three finally, and bodies flying again underneath. McAdoo with his fourth. When you've made a run like San Antonio has made, you tie it up. It's very, very important, Brent, to get ahead in the game. You keep trying to climb the mountain. You can't get over the top. It's important to get ahead, make a good defensive play, get up, and then the count will really go wild. They haven't been able to get totally on top of the mountain, and that can really hurt you because it takes an awful lot out of the players, physically and mentally. Two big misses by Artis. Kareem sends it back to Nixon. Here's McAdoo. Dunleavy puts it down. Kareem. Edgar Jones, Mitchell, and Lambus were tied up. The foul is on Lambus, and that's his fourth. Spurs can tie it. Mitchell. 